So there's not really a whole lot we can salvage because everything is pretty incinerated. Gone. Their house, their dog breeding business, their sense of safety. Angela and Clayton Erickson weren't home at the time, but say their adult son burned down their house during a psychotic episode three weeks ago. Eighteen puppies and dogs died in the fire. We looked for mom because I wanted to bury my moms and the puppies, but there's nothing left in the kennels. 29-year-old Colton Erickson is in jail, charged with assault and four counts of arson. Nothing has been proven in court, but his parents say he needs help. Oh, he gave his shirt off his back. He's beautiful. Since childhood, Colton has been diagnosed with a long list of mental disorders. Most recently, paranoid schizophrenia. A day before the fires, his parents called 911. He was threatening to slice his daughter in my throats and was on a rampage in our house. Angela recorded some of it before hiding in the closet with her granddaughter. He had two voices. So he had one voice um, that was kind of saying that we were going to kill him, that he would have to kill us first. Then there was this little boy's voice. It was just, it sounded like um, just a little child saying, no, 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 don't kill my mom and daughter. Um, I, I'll kill myself first before I let you kill my mom and daughter. The RCMP confirmed they took Colton into custody under the Mental Health Services Act and transported him to hospital for treatment. But he was released within a couple hours. I couldn't believe that the doctor would release him. The Ericsons were sure the doctor would send Colton for psychiatric assessment and treatment. The Saskatchewan Health Authority won't say why Colton was released. His mother believes he was dismissed as a drug addict rather than treated as mentally ill. But there's also a serious staffing shortage at mental health facilities that's resulted in bed closures. Unfortunately, uh, we are seeing backlogs uh, and pressures on the system across the uh, country. The head of the Canadian Psychiatric Association says the overburdened system cannot provide timely care or early intervention, and that leads to even more serious mental illness. Having to respond to medical or psychiatric emergencies that might have been preventable, and uh, that's using up resources and staff time that uh, are in short supply already. I have the hospital bracelets from when he went in. Brian and Sandy Hap lose sleep over those missed opportunities. Their 25-year-old son is also in jail, accused of killing his girlfriend. They were a great couple, um, very much in love with one another. Thomas Hamp and his girlfriend, Emily Sanch, were together for five years. We're not showing her image at this time at her parents' request. Both studied psychology in university. She was finishing her master's degree in counseling, but their studies didn't help them navigate the mental health system. Before Christmas, Thomas revealed he was having intrusive thoughts. He believed people were spying on him. He was worried that they were going to take him away and torture him and uh, operate on his brain. The young couple went to the emergency department. Emily said she felt like she'd been really brushed off by the psychiatrist at the ER. Like they just wouldn't pay attention to what she was trying to say. In January, Thomas saw another psychiatrist and then back to the ER a second time. But Thomas's parents say he's always been smart and secretive. They're racked with guilt, wondering what more they could have done. Because he's an adult and... Uh, and uh, because of privacy concerns, for us to advocate was almost impossible. One of the reasons they sent Thomas home without any result was because there was no indication of him being violent towards himself or anyone else. There was, that was not a concern at all. And um, so it had been suggested to us that we actually lie and say we are concerned that he's going to hurt himself or someone else so that we would get more attention. Thomas agreed to go back to the ER a third time. In preparation, Emily logged all of his delusions in this 
four page document so that Thomas's dad, Brian, could present it to doctors as evidence. But he never got the chance. About 2.46 in the morning, I got a call from Emily. The reason? Help. Uh, and uh, again, whatever was happening, it happened. And somehow she dialed my number um, and, and I didn't hear, hear her, but I could hear Thomas screaming in the background uh, that they're out to get him. They're over there, help me get them. And that'll stay in my memory forever. He says Thomas had already stabbed Emily. That was February 20th. She spent three weeks in hospital, then died from her injuries. Emily's parents say it's too early to comment. Thomas has been charged with second-degree murder. Nothing has been proven in court. Now, Thomas's psychiatric assessment has been delayed because of staffing shortages at the province's main psychiatric hospital. He's in a cell on suicide watch, still not getting any help. We were crying for it previously. Then the unthinkable happens. And no one's getting any help. Angela Erickson feels the same way. After her son Colton was released from the small town hospital on March 15th, he issued more threats. I was the effing bitch that did this to him and that I was going to pay for this. A psychiatrist prescribed medication, but within 36 hours, Colton is accused of lighting five fires in their small village and burning his parents' house down. He's also in jail, still unable to get a psychiatric assessment. The term catch and release is like, you know, with fish, that is what they do with mentally ill people in Canada. Both men behind bars, their parents stunned but adamant that the mental health system needs resources and repair and that their sons need help to keep them and others safe. So, Bonnie, this is terrible. Uh, these stories certainly speak to what those parents refer to as the systemic failures. What are the professionals telling you might make a difference? Well, experts say mental illness is very complex, so there is no quick fix. But there is consensus that Canada has a shortage of psychiatric professionals and that we need more of them as the demand for services goes up. And the provinces are competing against each other to recruit counselors, psychiatric nurses, psychiatrists. So while healthcare is a provincial matter, there is a desire to see more of a national effort to increase training spots because ultimately early detection and treatment of mental health issues could potentially prevent the kind of crises you saw in our story. All right, Bonnie Allen, thank you.